What are your top five tips for an aspiring entrepreneur who's interested in being a real estate investor? Okay, great. And you mentioned that I, I wrote that down because I don't want to miss because it's not something I just want to just throw off my head and some kind of blended. So, <clears throat> top five tips that a fellow for an investor are. We ask this from all of our speakers. Every speaker gives their top five. Number one is that <clears throat> you have to have a purpose. This is what I mean by you have to have a purpose. Okay, we got two people, okay? Follow me, two people. One person, I'm going to say to you, okay, there is an 80 pound weight in front of you. We need to pick that weight up and run as fast as you can. Now, do you think you'll pick it up? No. Exactly. Why? Exactly. Now, anyone here has a child? Now, if your child was bitten by a snake, mm -hmm. and the venom, the, the antidote, is at a hospital in that direction, would you pick your child up and go running? Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> is the weight the same, 80 pounds roughly, give or take? Mm -hmm. Is the action of you running the same? Yes, it is. But the difference is the reason why. Right. And so at the end of the day, the reason why some hit the snooze button, and some don't, is there a reason why? Mm -hmm. Your purpose has to be large enough that there is no problem or challenge that will ever come in front of you to make you say no. Mm -hmm. The larger your purpose, the more you'll keep going. If you don't have a purpose, it's like that weight. Pick it up for what? And run where? No, I don't think so, buddy. But if there's a reason for it, that not reason has to come from you. So you have to dig in and understand what motivates you. And also understand that if you say, I don't know what my reason is, that has to do with our environment. <clears throat> Remember, we take on a lot. Hey, if I yawn, somebody ain't here is going to yawn. So it's just we take on things whether we want to or not. <clears throat> so you can take on a lot of things that you don't even take, take on things that you don't even know that you've taken on. Mm -hmm. That's why I am really conscious of stinking thinking. Soon as I'm around and then somebody starts talking something that doesn't make sense, I cut that quick. Because then you can pick it up like a yawn. Mm -hmm. And it gets planted into, yes. you, plant into your head you don't even realize mm -hmm. it. Like one thing I've, I've never say is like I can't or I'll see or I'll try. And in my office, people will come down, they would say, oh, I can't. I'm like, oh, hey, look. Mm -hmm. They say, well, we just read it done. I don't know. I'll try and see what I can make happen. I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to take it because I care and also because I don't want to catch that yawn. Just don't say try around. You do right. it or you don't. Mm -hmm. Say no, you won't do it. Or say yes, you will do it. Because what will happen is I will subconsciously start hearing try. And you know, I'll say, I'm going to try. And my closest business partners will say, Kay, Kenny, uh, you got this event coming up. I think you're going to do I don't know, man. I'm going to give my best shot. They said, man, who have you been hanging around? I said, right. yeah, that's right. How did I pick that? What the <laughs> heck? <laughs> you know, and that becomes a part of you. You don't even realize it. Before you know it, your whole trajectory or your life has changed. Mm -hmm. You may have been ended up here. Mm -hmm. Now you may end up over here. Just because of the words you choose to use right there. It's different. So your purpose right there is very important. And it has to be pretty big right there. Uh -huh. And uh, your purpose also changes, too, as you go through life. But it has to be large and it has to be huge on that right there. It has to be huge because at the end of the day, that's what's going to get you up. You also have to have a plan. You have to have a plan because without a plan, you don't know if you're going or coming. Like, for example, if someone were to say, is this bottle of water tall, what would you say? I don't know. Right? Yeah. But if you put this bottle of water next to this table, no, it's short. Mm -hmm. You put this bottle of water next to this phone, no, it's tall. You have to have a plan and a metrics. So a metrics within your plan will tell you, are you winning or are you losing? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you see, when a plane leaves from here and go to Hawaii, Hawaii isn't at the same place it was when the plane first took off. Hawaii has moved because the earth rotates complete a whole circle in 24 hours. So if it takes you 12 hours to get there, Hawaii was here and is now here. Mm -hmm. The wind, turbulence, so many things cause things to move. So when you have a plan, you know that you have to make adjustments on what they call course correction. And that's paramount for success. But all that stems from a plan. So when you have a plan, 
you have to allow for course correction. When you have a plan, you also have to have metrics. So that way you know, you know what, if I want to do certain things, reverse engineer, I want to be at a certain place for a certain period of time in a year, I know I should be here in six months and be there in a quarter. I know I should be at all the way down to the month. And if you're not there at the month, then it's time to make an adjustment, a course correction. So having a metrics to know if you're ahead of schedule or behind schedule, and having a plan to know when you do course correction is paramount to help you manage your own success. That's how New Year's resolutions remain the same without that. And your New Year's resolutions the same as it was every year because there was no metrics, there was no plan, there was no course correction.